Hey guys, welcome back to Project Tube. I'm Project. Today we're going to build a vacuum casting table. If you've been looking for ways like I have to increase the detail and quality of your smaller cast, then this is the video for you. We're going to show you how to do it on the cheap, the most cost effective way of doing it, and then we're going to cast something at the end of this video and test it out. So stick around. This boy thing's heavy. All right, this is all the stuff I ordered off of Amazon for this project. Not all of it is actually for this project. For instance, this is just investment that I ordered, uh, but you can get this off Amazon. I'll leave all the, the, the links in the description for you guys if you are interested in building this yourself. So let's start off with this guy right here. This isn't actually important for this project, but it is important for this casting and it's a vacuum chamber so that we can get all the bubbles out of the investment before casting. And it's just useful as a tool for the shop anyways with all the different projects we do. This one's actually nice. It's got the, the glass top rather than the acrylic, which I've, I've heard is much better. So that's our vacuum chamber. Next, you can't have a vacuum chamber without a vacuum pump. So we got a vacuum pump. Again, link is in the description. We're gonna need the actual table to cast on. This round steel plate I got off Amazon as well. I probably went overkill with the size. I got quarter inch, could have gone less than quarter inch to be honest with you. But here it is, either way it'll be perfect. Just might take a long, little longer to drill through. We have some, a valve, a flask, sawed flask. I don't even know what this is. Oh, I think these are legs for the table. Yeah, so I got some heavy duty steel, stainless steel legs. You'll see what those are for as we get moving here. We got, this is important. This is one of the things that I didn't get off of Amazon. It's a high temperature silicone gasket. And I got this off Rio Grande. So link will be in the description for that. That's one of the things I didn't get off of Amazon. Some tongs for the flask, a rubber, rubber end for the flask, sprue end for the flask, some bolts for the legs because they only came with some crappy ones. And then some vacuum hose. I don't know. I'll show you a close up of this. I'll probably clip it in right here. This is vacuum hose. It's reinforced so that it doesn't um, kink under vacuum. So we got that. Trash. One single barb fitting that'll go at the bottom of the vacuum plate. Uh, and I just got some jeweler's wax to screw up some stuff. And that's pretty much just some gloves as well. You can never have too many gloves in the shop. So that goes over there. All right, let's get uh, this cleaned up and we'll get started. All right, here are the legs. Why is there only two of them? Damn it. Was there only two? So apparently I only ordered two of these. I thought it was for four, but it's only two. So we're gonna have to make do with two. Ah, I can't believe I did that. I opted for a 12 inch diameter steel plate. So that puts us at six inches dead center. And I think we can do one inch from the outside for our legs. Still got my Pokemon pencil. If you guys watched the bench video, it's still kicking it. Right, I'm gonna start out with my crappy old drill bit. We're gonna start with that and uh, we'll go to my new ones uh, if this doesn't work. All right, obviously a drill press would be ideal for this. I don't have one. But hey, if you want to support this channel, the, one of the best ways you can do it is by liking and subscribing and sharing this video. So, you know, maybe I can get a drill press in the future. Woo! Yeah, buddy. We did it. Cool. Two more to go. 
All right, there's all three holes done. Uh, if anyone was wondering what I was using for cutting oil, it was just bar and chain oil, like, you know, for a chainsaw. I've used it in the past, works pretty good. Just cleaning these holes up a little bit with a little file, uh, taking off any burrs that are maybe on it. I was able to find some caliper paint, some gray. I don't think we used any of this on the foundry build. We just used the black, so we got a full can of that. It's good for 900F or 482C. This thing will never get that hot, but it's good to have some protection so it doesn't rust. And I wanted some kind of high temp paint. It doesn't have to be 900F, but that's what we got. I was just using the sandpaper to clean up some of these holes along with the file. Once we get done with that, go ahead and clean it off with some mineral spirits and then we'll get it painted. All right, and here it is all painted. I think it turned out pretty good. It still needs to dry a little bit, but I think we can put the legs on. I went ahead and hooked up all the hoses for the vacuum pump. So the vacuum pump comes out there, goes to the top of this valve, and then each side of this valve goes to, one goes to the vacuum chamber and the other one goes to the vacuum table here. All right, let's go ahead and get these feet on. I don't know if you can tell, but I ordered some extra nuts because this only comes with one at the bottom, which doesn't, just holds that rod in there. Uh, at that point and then this one so we need one to kind of pinch it in between here so i ordered some extra nuts this is easy enough at least in theory put it down like that put the nuts up and like i said originally i thought i had ordered four of these so there would be two here as well but apparently i didn't i looked back at the amazon order no it only said two i think the picture showed four and that's what i thought but as you can see it's fairly stable all right, time to mix this up and get this thing attached. I've used JBOL like this before, and it tends to work pretty good, at least from what I've found. So this isn't going to be a structural thing at all. It just needs to hold it there. When it gets vacuum, it will naturally want to stick to, to the steel. Now, I've roughed this up uh, with some 80-grit sandpaper, and then I cleaned it with some uh, rubbing alcohol as well as the fitting here. So let's just mix these two together. Okay, it is the next day. The paint is dry, the JB Weld is cured, the hose is attached. I screwed up these pirate coins last night so we can get some hopefully good detail out of these things. Let's get this thing invested and cast. Here's a quick shot of the flask after it's pretty much cured and uh, you can see how it's going to fit right there on the casting table. Now we got to get it burnt out and we can pour some metal. And here are the results. We got one full coin and three quarters of a coin. 
the side coins didn't come out i'm actually really happy with this guys this is the first time i vacuum casted anything and the de level of detail on this coin is just amazing it looks beautiful uh, the side ones didn't come out and that is one of the downsides of a vacuum table versus a vacuum chamber with a perforated flask. The vacuum sucks from the top rather than all sides and that could be one of the reasons why the side coins didn't come out. The flask was at temperature 1100 degrees and the metal was at temperature as well so I'm not sure that's my best guess uh, but again I'm very happy with this. The detail is phenomenal and for 200 bucks you can't go wrong. Now Getting more detail and doing a perforated flask obviously is better and I thought about doing a video of doing that rather than the vacuum table but I figured I'd start with the table and then if we need to modify the vacuum chamber with a perforated flask then we can do that in the future. If that's something you're interested in leave a comment below. If you guys like this video please hit subscribe and like I really appreciate it and I will see you guys next time.